it's Marley from The Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Thursday, October 17th. So welcome to the full moon in Aries day. Of course, that is just the first of two major energy shifts taking place here today. The second one, of course, is Venus moving out of Scorpio energy and moving into Sagittarius energy. So we've been building towards this particular full moon event for the last couple of days. And of course, this full moon in Aries is definitely going to return us to normal moon programming. What do I mean by that? Well, we've been under the eclipse energy, specifically the full moon lunar eclipse that we had in Pisces energy in September is now coming to an end, now coming to a close. The full moon in Aries is now taking over. And of course, this is going to be a full illumination of this new version of self, of new wants, needs and desires, of the moves, the actions that we need to make in order to really empower ourselves. So of course, there is a astro forecast out there for this particular moon event. Take a listen to that. There is a moon guide that I'm going to encourage you to download and do the shadow work to stay in alignment with this energy. And of course, if you have your October energy guide specifically tailored to your specific zodiac, bust that out and really do a deep dive on where this particular energy is taking place. So besides the full moon in Aries, besides Venus kind of moving into that Sag energy, we're also going to see this full moon pop off and then go void, of course, at 327 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're locking into Taurus energy at 4.01 p.m. Let me just say, it's going to feel like we hit a brick wall. It's going to feel like we're all kind of manic, have ants in our pants, all this restlessness, and then flatline. That is the grounding energy that the Taurus energy is going to allow us in order to integrate the revelations, the emotions, a lot of the situations and circumstances that are now coming full circle. There are pieces of clarity coming in that we weren't able to see under the eclipse energy that now we're starting to piece together. So there is quite a lot going on here today, uh, meaning not only the full moon in Aries, not only Venus moving into Sag, not only this transition shortly after the full moon peaks into Taurus energy, But there are 14 different aspects popping off here today. So a very busy day in the cosmos. 10 of those aspects are going to involve the moon. So let's jump into it. First of all, the moon in this Aries energy going to come up to bump into team up with conjunct Chiron, the wounded healer, who, of course, is retrograde in this Aries energy. A conjunction is just as much of a beginning as it is an ending. Of course, you need an ending in order for a beginning to actually take place. And what we're kind of dealing with here is Chiron helping us to bring this new version of self online, more authentic version of self led by the soul self instead of the wounded ego self. So what we're putting behind us are the wounds, the pain, the trauma, that again, coming full circle, we're realizing now that this new version of self has essentially been anchored in, we are realizing that this new version of self is being shaped by the old version of self, what we were lacking, what we were kind of using for a defense mechanism. We're peeling those particular layers back. We're open to grow. We're open to heal. We're open to evolving. And again, this is definitely going to put into perspective the strength that we are now feeling by anchoring into this new version of self. The moon in Aries energy going to sextile beautiful interaction with Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, blessings, who of course is retrograde in Gemini energy. We have fire and air coming together to spark a new realization, to spark a new aha moment in order for us to see where it is that we can kind of grow upon some of the old ideas, some of the old topics and themes, some of the old information and knowledge that again, now Jupiter being retrograde, we're kind of digging up, we're revisiting, we're reflecting upon. Jupiter brings the hype, he brings the growth, he brings the confidence, the optimism that many of us have been lacking for quite some time, especially through these eclipse energies. And so there's a lot of emotions that need to rise to the surface. We are under a full moon. That's what it's all about. And Jupiter is showing us again where it is that we're shifting our perspective and perception of self, of our situations, of our circumstances. And from that, again, we get to see the bigger, broader picture. The moon is then going to get into the boxing ring, square off with Mars. Mars rules over this Aries energy in his rulership 
over this full moon in Aries event. But of course, Mars, he's over there in Cancer energy. Not very happy. He's in preservation mode. He is in defense mode. He is willing to fight, defend, protect what it is that he's already built, already created, what means most to him. However, a square is highlighting the tension, the conflict, the growing pains. So the moon in Aries wants nothing to do with the past, just wants to kind of cut that particular section of our lives out so that we can orient to what it is that we have power and control over in the here and now and start building towards a new vision, new dream. Mars, on the other hand, he has no choice but to be kind of attached to the past because the cancer energy doesn't want to even be present, doesn't even want to think about the future. We're overly attached to keeping things the same, to doing things the same, to preserving what it is that we've already built and created. This is going to highlight tension and conflict because, again, this is a growing pain. How can we start something new if we're constantly being projected back in the past, fighting, defending, protecting what it is that we've all grown, what it is that we're no longer gaining anything from. The moon, then going to make a positive interaction with Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money, at this 29th critical crisis degree in Scorpio energy. This is going to be an aha moment on where there's been a major change, major transformation of heart, of worth, of values, recognizing what we truly are deserving of, and in that, identifying new wants, needs, and desires, we recognize Again, in comparison to the people, places, and things that we've chosen for ourselves up to this point, some people, places, and things have got to go. So emotionally speaking, we are definitely feeling fired up to do what we need to do to close the door on the past, clear the space, clean the slate, to start building towards something new. 727 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, the moon is going to come into opposition, sit directly across from the sun in Libra energy. This is what gives us our full moon in Aries. Again, please listen to the forecast. Please download the moon guide. Please use the resources out there in order for you to stay ahead of the game. This is going to be the potency, the peak potency that we are going to reach here today. And then we are going to see the energy kind of dissipate. There is a slew, a huge list of a lot of positive aspects taking place here underneath this moon event. And again, download your moon guide, understand the elemental energy profile, understand all of the planetary aspects really pushing for change, for transformation in the best kind of way. About an hour later, we have Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money coming into a sextile, a beautiful interaction with Pluto, the great transformer, at the 29th critical crisis degree of Capricorn energy. I've said it before, I'm going to say it again. Scorpio energy, Capricorn energy work very well together. When you water Earth, something grows. Venus, emotionally speaking, is bossed up. She's empowered. She knows what she wants and she knows what she's got to do to get it. Pluto, on the other hand, in Capricorn energy, bringing in the wrecking ball, breaking down all of the structures, all the foundations, all of the boundaries that we've previously built to prevent us from getting hurt again. This is the clean sweep that we have to do from now until November in order to close this particular Capricorn chapter. This is going to help us break down barriers around our heart space, give us some new aha moments on what we actually want, need and desire when it comes to happiness and joy and love and relationships and comfort and money matters. And we're definitely going to see things from a different lens coming up with a very clear cut strategy on what we have to do to, again, kind of get rid of the old aspects, the old fragments of the old version of self and the life in which we had built in order for us to be able to concentrate all of our energies on what we now want to build and create for our future selves. This energy is going to be very potent, both at 29 degrees. There's going to be heart activations. I am going to recommend that you listen to the Ascension forecast for this week. If you haven't listened to it yet, you should listen to it for the first time. And if you have listened to it already, maybe just do a little bit of check in to reassure yourself that all of the physical symptoms that you're experiencing here today are due to the energy shifts, specifically with Venus at this 29 critical crisis degree of Scorpio energy, where death and destruction leads us to a resurrection to a rebirth. 
We have the moon in Aries energy, then making a positive interaction with Uranus, the great awakener who is retrograde in Taurus energy. This is going to bring in a brand new mood, a brand new perspective, a brand new attitude, let's say, in order for us to tackle the physical realm aspects that we're dearly holding on to, that we're not gaining anything from, that are pretty much just taking up space. Now, why are we holding on to them? Well, because we're human beings and we haven't quite grasped that we have to kind of give a vote of confidence to the universe and clear away the gunk, clear away the old and trust that something better is going to be delivered in the place of the things that we're currently clearing out. Because we're human beings, we're holding on desperately to things that are no longer serving us, waiting for the better things to arrive before we let go of all the things. The moon in Aries kind of gives us a little bit of tenacity, a little bit of a warrior type of spirit, mood and attitude to do all of the things. And so emotionally speaking, we're fired up, we're ready to go. We have now understood the mission and we just want to take actions in order to actually honor said mission. Uranus is bringing in this destabilizing energy in order for us to feel the earth kind of shaking underneath our feet, so to speak, to illuminate the weaker parts of the foundations and the structures of the physical form in which, again, no longer serving us, but for some reason, we're still holding on to. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Neptune. Neptune, of course, retrograde in his rulership in this Pisces energy, all about our spiritual selves, our intuition, our dreams, our creativity, our imagination. And we're fired up. We're ready to go. Emotionally speaking, in this Aries energy, we're hot to trot. We are willing to do whatever needs to be done in order for us to close the door on the past and actually get started in manifesting some of the newer aspects, the newer wants, needs, and desires that our higher self is pushing us to pursue. The moon is then going to semi-square, creating a little bit of tension and conflict with Saturn, the Lord of Karma, who is retrograde in Pisces energy. This is going to give us a little bit of a reality check. We're coming, we're coming down from this peak full moon energy. And of course, Saturn brings realism. This is why we get a harsh reality check whenever he's being aspected in a not so nice way. And the reality check is, is that we could do all the things. We could do the hard things. We could do the easy things. We could close the door on the past. We could start building towards the future. But if we do not reform, reshape, rearrange, rebuild our inner belief system of what we truly believe that we are capable of, that we are deserving of, that we are worthy of, we are only going to rebuild a similar situation that has us disappointed. The inner work is needed. We have to understand where it is that it's our belief system that creates the situations and circumstances that we experience in the physical realm. Again, a little bit of tension to highlight where it is that we have to come down off of this high and be a little bit more realistic with where it is in our inner realm. We have to examine where the false sense of belief the unworthiness narrative is still alive and well within us. We have Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves in Scorpio energy, making a little bit of an awkward interaction with Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance and blessings, retrograde in Gemini energy. Water and air kind of works in an electricity kind of way. Now you could think of it like, you know, throwing a toaster in a, you know, full bath probably isn't going to be a great outcome. But what it is going to do is it's going to shock us. It's going to spark something and it's going to shock and spark our emotional realm in order for us to see things from a bigger, broader perspective. Again, Jupiter magnifies, Mercury hones in, we're using our intellect and our intuition and the Scorpio energy, we're reviewing, reflecting old situations and circumstances, inner dialogues, inner narratives with Jupiter's retrograde. So this is going to help us kind of see a bigger part, broader part of a greater, grander picture, either looking back, seeing the details from a different set of eyes or seeing new details for the future plans, the future strategies that we have to start working upon in order to manifest different aspects, different situations, different scenarios. 
At 3.27 p.m., we are going to have our very last aspect with this moon in Aries, and it is going to be a unpleasant one because we're getting into the boxing ring. We're squaring off with Pluto, again, at the 29th critical crisis degree of this Capricorn energy. Aries energy is a cardinal sign. Capricorn energy is a cardinal sign. A square highlights where we're going through growing pains. Emotionally speaking, again, we just want to kind of move on. We want to move forward. We want to jump into something new. We want to build and create something new. Pluto and Capricorn energy, we're wrapping up the past. We're actually wrapping up a 16-year chapter, if we want to get down to the nitty-gritty about it. So emotionally speaking, we might be wanting to push for something new into a futuristic realm. Pluto, on the other hand, he's up on this cleanup crew, you know, clean up on aisle eight, so to speak. We have to continue to demolish and destroy the existing structures, foundations, and aspects that the old version of self had created in the old realm and reality that we are now bringing to a crumble, and we have to clean up that particular debris. So there's going to be a lot of friction, a lot of tension in our emotional realm, and this is the point where the moon goes void, of course. Now, while the moon is void, Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money, she moves into Sagittarius energy. Again, there's an Asher forecast for this event. Please take a listen to it. Bust out your October energy guide. Capture what is going on for you at this particular juncture. And again, just use all of the resources to the best of your ability to stay in alignment, to stay ahead of the game. 4.01 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the moon is shifting into Taurus energy. This is where we're going to be very weighted. We're going to be very aware of our physical form, very connected to our physical environment, very slow in comparison to the rapid energy that took place in this Aries energy over the last couple of days. Two minutes later, we have the moon now in Taurus energy, making the harshest interaction with Venus. Venus rules over this Taurus energy. So this particular interaction with the rulership that the moon is now currently in is going to be a little bit intense. Here's the thing. The moon in Taurus wants us to be present, wants us to connect to the here and now, wants us to be so aware of this present moment of our physical form, of our physical circumstances that we're not thinking about the past and we're not thinking about the future. Problem is Venus in the Sag energy, she is so futuristically focused that she's bouncing around. The heart space is now a little bit jittery. She wants to experiment. She wants to explore. Problem is, is that the Taurus energy that the moon is now in, we want to kind of stick to what is tried, tested and true. We want to stick to what is comfortable and what is familiar. And that is going to be not the same vibe that Venus is currently in. Thus, there's going to be a little bit of friction. There's going to be a little bit of tension. We're going to be feeling pulled in two very different directions. The last thing that we have going on here today is Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information communication, how it is that we express ourselves in this Scorpio energy, making a very harsh interaction with the North Node in Aries energy. So that North Node is trying to get us on the right path, trying to get us to kind of align with a new mission, a new purpose, trying to show us where it is that we need to grow and heal and evolve. Mercury's not having any of that. We have the detective hats on, we have to look back in our past, we have to kind of revisit and review, if you will, even though Mercury's not retrograde, in Scorpio energy with the detective hat on, we have to revisit the crime scene, so to speak, we have to revisit, replay how certain situations and circumstances actually unfolded, because we're operating from a new level of awareness, a new level of consciousness, we are able to pluck out details that we would have missed, and again, the whole purpose is to bring things up so we can break things down so that we can deal with the actual facts, the actual truth, the actual data. And so, you know, how are we supposed to move on? How are we supposed to grow? How are we supposed to evolve if there's still a lot of question marks from our past kind of pulling us back to re-examine, re-analyze, revisit certain situations and circumstances that are very, very important to integrate in this present moment in the here and now to avoid making the same kind of mistakes again. <laughs>